The OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro have been out for about two weeks now, and I wanted to give you my real-world first impressions after around two weeks of using the OnePlus 8 Pro as my daily driver. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I think this phone is probably the Android phone to beat for 2020. I know it's early, and I'm hoping it does get beat because that's always great for the customer. But with that being said, beating the OnePlus 8 Pro is going to be very hard to do. So far over my two weeks, I've noticed a few things that I absolutely love, as well as a couple of things that I'm not really a big fan of. And so I'm gonna try to go over all of that with you right now, and hopefully pretty quickly. First things first, this display is incredible. It's big, bright, beautiful, vibrant, crisp, color accurate, all of the key buzzwords that you would want in a display, the OnePlus 8 Pro has it. It's just simply amazing. I used to favor Samsung's displays, but I think this 6.7 inch AMOLED beauty just tops it. 120 hertz, while I admit not a necessary feature, it's incredibly nice to have. I love everything about how it feels. It's just buttery smooth and super fluid. Battery life, yes, it will take a little bit of a hit with this on, especially when you keep the resolution at QHD, but you can toggle one or both of those things down a notch if you want. For me, I want the best going at all times because that's what we pay for, and so for that, I'll suffer a little bit on battery life. Now, while battery life has been a bit of a disappointment for me, yes, I am aware that those settings are probably the reason why, it's not really that big of a deal because of how quick the OnePlus 8 can charge. Warp charge has been around for a little bit. It's super fast and it's included in the box, which a lot of manufacturers still really aren't doing these days. There's also a new warp charge wireless charger that wirelessly charges the 8 Pro at an incredible 30 watts, which is blazing fast. And if you got an extra $70 to spare, eh, it might be worth picking up. Now, if you have this color OnePlus 8 Pro, it signifies that you have the cheaper model with only eight gigabytes of RAM and 120 28 gigs of internal storage. The black and blue models give users 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage, but I highly doubt that performance boost will be noticeable to most average consumers, and I think 128 gigs is probably enough internal storage for most people. So if you're unsure on which one to get, go with this glacial green base model. It's an incredible color, and you save some cash. All in all, OnePlus definitely gets an A for design. I would have given this an A plus if it made the screen flat and didn't round out the edge. I absolutely hate curved edges. You all probably know this by now, so I won't dwell too much. Just know that it's a major bummer for me. Since I mentioned internal specs a little bit, know that the OnePlus 8 Pro has the latest and greatest specs inside, like all flagships these days. I really hate dwelling on flagship performance because it's all pretty much the same these days, especially during the first few weeks of use. It's gonna be nothing but blazing fast and almost perfect. So let's revisit how performance uh, you know, kind of holds up within the next six months or so. Now the OnePlus 8 Pro runs Oxygen OS, it's version of Android 10, and it's pretty much a stock experience with a few tweaks that are all customizable and mostly useful additions. Now I'm actually going to be doing a video, or depending on when you watch this, I probably already made a video, walking through all of the tips and tricks and features from Oxygen OS that you need to know, so you should definitely check that out if you're interested. Just know that Oxygen OS is clean, minimal, and all around pretty much lag free. I love it. Finally, the cameras. OnePlus added four lenses this time. You get the ultra wide, the wide, the telephoto, and then the depth sensor to help out with portraits. OnePlus is usually not my first thought when it comes to the best in class for camera performance, but this year they've kind of done a pretty good job. Now they were really never bad to begin with, but it was never really at the top of my camera list. I would still argue that the Pixel and the iPhone 11 Pro might take more natural and better photos, but honestly, OnePlus improved its cameras so much that it's probably just going to come down to preference at this point. This camera system can be argued with the best and I'd be willing to hear those arguments. I'd also let you decide and would love to know in the comments what you think of the pictures that you've seen so far, but all around, I've been pretty happy with the pictures that I've had coming out of the camera and software updates have been happening a lot lately that have actually been making noticeable improvements to the image quality, which is always great to see. 
The OnePlus 8 Pro also offers 4K 60 video, and it's definitely a huge improvement over a lot of other Android devices, especially in the video department. So as you can see, I'm a big fan so far. I do think the device is a little big, and yes, I know that's the norm these days, but whenever I pick up the smaller OnePlus 8, I always reflect on how great that kind of feels in the hands, having the smaller device. Kind of, it's kind of the perfect size, but that device has a few more shortcomings that we might need to make a separate video about because there is a pretty decent difference between the 8 and the 8 Pro. Unfortunately, the other bummer this year is the price. Now, while I'll give OnePlus credit for pricing this phone aggressively, it just marks kind of the end of the era that we all know where OnePlus was known as the flagship killer. They made a few compromises, but offered up a fantastic device that could compete with the flagships. Now, the 8 Pro, is a flagship with nearly no compromises, so the $899 price tag absolutely makes sense for this day and age. And thankfully, it's kind of a bargain when you compare it to something like the S20 Ultra, in which this device completely stacks up against it, goes toe to toe, maybe even beats it, and it's $400 cheaper. So I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you picking one up? Do you currently have one? Are you using it? I would love to know what you think of the OnePlus 8 Pro down in those comments. This has been Dan. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.